Haven't you ever seen a Western? Yeah, I have, Doc. And Clint Eastwood never wore anything like this. Clint who? That's right. You haven't heard of him yet. Why? You have to wear the boots. You can't wear those futuristic things back in 1885. You shouldn't even be wearing them here in 1955. All right, Doc, look, as soon as I get there, I'll put them on, I promise. OK. I think we're about ready. I put gas in the tank. Your future clothes are packed. Just in case, press batteries for your walkie-talkies. Oh, what about that floating device? Hoverboard. All right. You know, Doc, it's going to be a hell of a long walk back to Hill Valley from here. Still the safest plan. After all, we can't risk sending you back into a populated area or to a spot that's geographically unknown. You don't want to crash into some tree that once existed in the past. This is all completely open country. So you'll have plenty of runout space when you arrive. Remember where you're going, there are no roads. And there's a small cave over there which will be a perfect place to hide the time vehicle. Well, the new time circuit control tubes are warmed up. Time circuit's on. I wrote the letter on September 1st, so we'll send you back the very next day, September 2nd. That's a Wednesday, September 2nd, 1885, 8 a.m. I get shot on Monday the 7th, so you have five days to locate me. According to my letter, I'm a blacksmith, so I probably have a shop somewhere. All you have to do is drive the time vehicle directly toward that screen, accelerating 88 miles an hour. Wait a minute, Doc. If I drive straight towards the screen, I'm going to crash into those Indians. Marty, you're not thinking fourth dimensionally. They'll instantly be transported to 1885, and those Indians won't even be there. Right. Well, good luck for both of our sakes. See you in the future. You mean the past? Exactly. <laughs>